Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be expanding upon, I guess you could say, our previous tutorial, because this of course is part two. So during this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fix a couple of the errors that we had inside our previous tutorial, as well as of course how to interact with enemies. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do this. So starting off, if you take a look at our character, our character is actually moving perfectly, which is unlike we, what we had on our previous tutorial. Um, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, basically in our previous tutorial, our character was pretty much just running past the point and not stopping at the point of, uh, well, stopping. So I basically had to modify that to fix it up. Also, during this tutorial, as I said, we're going to have it to where our character interacts with other players. So you have a third person that switches to these two, or switches between targets based on wherever your mouse is pointing. And of course, will not switch if they're out of the range of your attack. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna be discussing is setting up your scene, or setting up your enemy to be more specific. Now, all I did was I took my original player, just copied them, and then dragged them forward. Then from there, I simply renamed the character, which this is not a necessary step, but I went ahead and did that. The next thing that you're going to need to do is add a new tag onto your character, and this tag is going to be called enemy. Now, if you don't have this enemy underneath your tags inside the inspector, make sure that you go over to add tags, press this plus key, and then hit enemy inside that little slot. Okay, so this sets up our enemy. Now we're also gonna to need to disable this player controller. Uh, eventually we will actually delete that or remove it from our character, but uh, for now we're gonna keep it. Also on our player, to fix our previous issues that we had, make sure that you set your angular speed to about 5,000, your acceleration to about eight, and of course, if you roll down here to the bottom where we have our player control script, if you don't have the script, um, I will have a link to this script inside the description below. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And make sure that you have your walk speed set to five or less and your run speed set to 10 or less. Of course, your walk range is gonna be set as 20, your stopping distance too. Uh, this, it really doesn't matter if it's selected or not, is run, same thing. And you're going to set the attack range to whichever range you want it to be. Now this will be based on whether your character is a melee character or if your character is a uh, gunman. So right now I have it set at 6. And of course you're going to see this little empty uh, transform slot. And it's going to be called current enemy. So current enemy is going to basically be for uh, us selecting our enemies. So just keep that in mind as well. Of course, our characters have a different color on them. Just keep that in mind as well. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so now since we got done with all the introductions on all that stuff, we're gonna head over here to the animator. So with the animator, we simply added a new, um, I guess you could say new animation. And with this animation, it's just gonna be used for our interaction with everything, whether you're just fighting or if you're you know, pushing something or whatever. Uh, we're just using this for demonstrational purposes. So for however many different types of movements you have, just make sure that you have uh, this set up for each one. So what we have here is we went over to parameters, press this plus key, and we uh, basically named it interact, uh, or we created a trigger called interact. So just make sure that you do have that as a trigger and then name it that or whatever you want to call it just make sure that when we head over to the script you adjust it to the exact spelling type okay so as the layout if you set up the um, last tutorial like if you uh, participate in part one then you will know how this is set up and to set this up everything that's heading to interact say for instance this one this one and this one uh, if you notice, we have a condition called interact. So to set up the uh, condition, simply press this plus key, then select interact. So once you have that set up, you're gonna make sure has exit times off. 
mainly because we want it to in the animation and heading back to these other animations it's going to be set up just like you had the walk animation to run or walk to idle or run to walk and run to idle it's the same combination so if you didn't follow along into the previous tutorial I'll just go and discuss the run so run uh, from interact to run all you're doing is you're saying if is idle is equal to false and is run is equal to true and has exit time is true so there we go and that's pretty much the basic setup for our animations okay so now since we got our animations out of the way let's go ahead and head over to the script now this is going to be the complete boringest part of this entire tutorial but you know let's go and get through it so I'm not going to cover everything inside here because I did cover most of it inside the previous tutorial so we're just going to be covering the new stuff so right here you're going to see at the way bottom of our mouse control function inside the update function and all uh, you're going to see if input dot get mouse button down one so if we left click and whatever our mouse is touching and if it is equal to the enemy so basically if our mouse is over an enemy then it's going to say that it's touching right and we're going to say new position is equal to hit dot point if you notice we're using the same reference right here to uh, say for instance if we hit the ground so it's the same point of contact same same control system pretty much it's just we're changing the tag to enemy instead of ground okay so let's head over here to the player control and this is where it gets well I wouldn't say complicated but it gets a little bit more entertaining so right here at the top of our script we're going to put a public float called attack range now attack range that's like I said tells us the distance of our attack we're also going to set public transform cur enemy uh, we're not going to give it a name for the enemy for now we'll do that inside the void start function so inside the void start function we're going to be saying cur enemy is equal to transform so we're saying that this we're basically setting up the base enemy is going to be equal to our player uh, starting off because we don't want our current enemy to equal null because then we end up with a bunch of errors and it's just a pain in the neck so yeah we just set it as uh, that okay so right here we're gonna say float I mean not that not that we're gonna go over here to new stuff I keep wanting to go to the old stuff it's crazy okay right here now you see the settings uh, right here we're going to basically say if our mouse is over the enemy then current enemy is equal to whatever we're touching right and we're gonna say else if it's not equal to enemy then current enemy is equal to our player now later on we will need to adjust the script uh, I'm actually gonna do that inside a new tutorial or our next tutorial uh, to fix this little issue but basically we're going to uh, change the change this up let's just say but for now we're going to be working with this okay so right here we're going to create a float called enemy distance if you don't know what this is we're going to be running the same function that we did for distance so the difference between distance and enemy distance is distance judges the I guess you could say distance between your current position and the new position so wherever your mouse is telling you to go while enemy distance tells you the difference between where you currently are and where the enemy is so that's pretty much what we're doing there and of course if you didn't see the rest of that right there okay so right here we're gonna say I left these notes for myself so you know it's great news uh, so basically we have interact if within range of enemies so if we're within the range of the enemy and our it has a tag of enemy then we're going to say anim.set trigger interact or attack or whatever you want it to be and if mc.target is equal to false I did it again people you would not believe how many times I want to go back to this uh, don't worry about that it's just basically saying if mc.target is equal to false and is selected equal to false we covered that into the previous tutorial but for some reason I want to keep going back to it okay <laughs> back over to this 
um, rotate interact towards current enemies. Uh, this is going to be underneath the is selected function that we created inside the first tutorial. And we're going to say if we're within range of the enemy, and of course as the tag of enemy, then we're going to do a couple different things. So we're going to say anim.set trigger interact. So we're accessing our animation controller and we're uh, setting the trigger to attack. We're also going to be setting transform.look at cur enemy. Uh, and we're going to make our character look at our enemy. We're also going to put our new position is equal to our current position. That way we stop where we are instead of moving to a new position. Then we're going to say enim, which is our nav mesh agent set destination, new position. So now we're setting our current position and we're also heading to that position. So we're not gonna be moving at all. Okay, we're gonna roll way down to the bottom now. And this is inside the if we're not selected function. And at the way bottom of that, we're going to find, I actually think, think it's outside. Nope, it is, okay. At the way bottom of this function, we're gonna put if we're within range of the enemy, and of course it's the enemy. Like as I've done throughout all these tutorials and all, it's pretty much the same code, but in a different spot with a different function. So same code as above, the new position is equal to transform.position, destination new position. Uh, that just basically says whenever we click off our character, so let's go and press play. Uh, so basically when we click our character to go and I select off, it keeps moving there. But if I select the enemy and the click off, it keeps going to the target position, which is what we wanted to do. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed this tutorial. If you like it, please like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, leave a link of a video of your problem. I'll be happy to go take a look at it and uh, figure out what I can do to help you guys out. Also, make sure that if you see this little null reference exception at the bottom, don't worry about it. It's not going to cause your project any form of harm as of right now. And I'm going to work on trying to actually fix that as well. Also, uh, just as another reference point, I will have both the scripts inside the comment section below as different comments. So uh, keep that in mind whenever you are setting this up. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.